Welcome to our Preps on 11 High School Football Preview Week 2 of high school football across Arkansas. Tyler Cash joined as always by Scorebook Live's Nate Olson. Nate, we're going to start with Lakeside and Malvern. Malvern, of course, the defending state champs. Lakeside, uh, perhaps surprising start to the season. Oh, I think right now they're the most surprising team in the state. I, I think when they beat Lake Hamilton, I thought, okay, you know, Lake Hamilton's rebuilding a little bit, but they hadn't beaten them in several years. Then they beat Russellville. That's a team that you, uh, people think, uh, you know, is a middle of the pack team at 6A West, which is so rugged. Tracy Daniels, a good running back. And then they win that game. Now people are kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, with a new coach and, you know, just a lot of players that you haven't really heard a lot about. But they, they, have, they have done a good job on Gary Rockwell. I, I saw your piece at the beginning of the year. And, and something that kind of stuck out to me is some of the players and the practices are different. There's more spirit there. Some of that stuff is, you know, coach speak and player speak. Everybody says that stuff at the beginning of the year. But I kind of took notice of that a little bit. I thought, you know, there's a lot of enthusiasm there. And uh, I thought, well, maybe in the next couple years they'll, they'll be good because it sounds like they've got the right guy there. But they might be good this year, you know. And Malvern's going to be another big test for them because, uh, you know, Malvern is loaded with athletes. I mean, for a 4A school, Jalen Dupree, the running back on Colorado State, you got Vinnie Winters on the on the interior line, uh, Division One prospect, and Kaylin Janelle, it's going to Arkansas State. I think that's one of Arkansas State's better prospects, and I think they could recruit Arkansas even better. That's a different topic for another show, but I do support them recruiting him. I think that was a very good pickup. But it's going to be real interesting to see how that game goes because I think at the beginning of the year, I would have been all in on Malvern in a, probably a two-touchdown kind of game. But now you kind of have to reconsider that. I, I think you do. I think it's going to be a close game. And um, look out for Lakeside. Maybe this is a surprise team of the year. All right. And then speaking of, you know, games featuring Arkansas high school players who might be going on the radar a little bit, I think, BB at Mills. I'm thinking of Mills where you got, you know, especially a quarterback there, Achilles Ringo, one of yeah. the better players who we maybe don't talk about enough. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was just on the phone with Kyle Sutherland and I was talking about Achilles. You know, I, I've got an intern that lives with me, J.D. Olson, and he's a ninth grader. And that on live-in the, intern. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and on the, on the way to uh, school, we talk about a lot of different things. And he said, Dad, Achilles Ringo has passed for 700 yards in two games. Why doesn't he get any attention? I said, that is a good question. And that's probably something that we need to do a better job of is mention his name. So we're going to do it right now. But a guy whose dad was a really good quarterback in high school. I covered him. I'm getting old covering these guys' fathers and stuff. But I like his, you know, arm, um, the way he moves it in the pocket, and just his, uh, you know, leadership abilities. I think he even showed that last year as a junior. A very, very good quarterback that I do think is, is college material that you, you think at some point somebody will look at him. And I think right now there's not a lot of offers, but as they go along, I would think that more people be interested. And of course you've got Charlie Collins. This is another team that's just loaded with athletes. Just you know, Collins is probably one of the better defensive linemen in the country. You see this guy, he just looks like a division one lineman and he's very athletic. He plays basketball or he did. I don't think he's gonna play this year, but a very good athlete and, uh, and they've got other guys around too. So I think this is a, is a state championship type team, a team that can go toe to toe with Parkview because they've got all the athletes. Uh, but BB is a team too. They lose Keandre Baker, who's one of the better running backs um, in the state, but they lose him and he transfers, but um, they've been able to put it together so far. So I think they're, they're enthusiastic about this game. Um, but they'll kind of see, you know, Friday night how, how good they are because Mills is a bona fide contender. You bring it up, you know, in talking about Mills and BB, you got it anytime we're talking about the 5A. Little Rock Parkview, as of now, still seems to run that conference. You're going to have to beat Parkview. Mm -hmm. Parkview now, though, we get to see just how good they are. They're going up against the best of the best. They make the trip to Bryant this week. Can they be the ones? We're going to ask this every week. Is Parkview the team yeah. that can beat the streak? Well, this is what I will tell you. They, I don't think there's any other team that Bryant will face, including Bentonville, that probably has, that can go athlete to athlete with them on 11 on 11. I think they have the guys up front. They have quarterback in McGee. Um, they've got, they've got uh, Marion uh, Robinson who's really good, you know, uh, defensive back. 
and, and he's one of the tops in the country. So athletic ability all over. They don't, and, you know, and Brad Bowling said last year that they had 6A football depth but a 5A school. But I don't even know if that kind of depth is good enough with Bryant. You know, and I think I think they even kind of wore CBC out. CBC is a big school in St. Louis, but uh, you know, Claude Sanders said that his defensive coordinator Travis Quick did a great job of running D linemen in and out. That's always been a trademark, even when, you know, when Buck was there, that offensive and defensive linemen are coming in and out of the game. One because of of depth and and just you know in hot nights and stuff like that, but also some of those guys they're good. But they don't. They're playing behind somebody. So he wants to make. He wanted to make sure Buck did that. A guy that's like a junior or sophomore that's pretty good doesn't quit. So you put them in there, and then when they become a junior or a senior, you can say they have experience playing. And so that's always been a hallmark. And they've got the athletes to do it. So in a game like that, I think that's what happened last year. Twenty to ten, Bryant. I think late in the game, Parkview got ran out of gas. But I mean, when you have players like they have, I mean, they can score anywhere on the field, they can score quickly. If you go up on a Bryant 14, that, that's the one thing we don't see that happens very much. What, how do they react if they fall behind? But playing at home, played so well at home against uh, uh, CBC, I, I, I think Bryant's intact and you know we go into the conference season undefeated. Yeah, winning by attrition may not be the prettiest way to win football games, but it is effective. All right, mm -hmm. finally, our game of the week. It's kind of rare you see a game at this level where each team is going to have a Razorback commit. Yeah. That's what we get with Boxite at CAC. Yeah, yeah, you've got Grayson Wilson, the quarterback at CAC, and uh, Marcus Wimberly uh, is a quarterback DB at Boxite. I, I, that's that's why you know, we have that as a game to watch because I think the main subplot is just that those guys are both going to Arkansas, and they're both athletic in their own right. And Wimberly is, is a guy that is going to go to college as a defensive back, but he's played quarterback out of necessity. Wilson is a guy that is a true blue four-star quarterback. Uh, and I really like CAC. Just to talk about them first. I like them as a program. They got a new coach in. Tommy Shoemaker did a great job there and kind of took them to this level, and they were kind of on cruise control. You bring in Ryan Howard, who has college experience and played quarterback in college. He was a college coach. Um, and it was at Missouri, and I think that's what they kind of needed. And now you've got a blue blood quarterback. You can do a lot of things when you have a guy like that, particularly at the 4A level. So I really see them probably advancing deeper in the playoffs than they have, and they didn't make the playoffs. So I think they can not only make it, but make a deep run. This is a critical game for both these teams in the conference. And also think Boxite is a team on to come up to. And you've got a guy like Wimberly, who's a jack of all trades that can do everything. He's just a fantastic athlete. I mean, Michigan said he was their number one defensive back in that class. That's saying a lot when you say that. And that's when you have that kind of athlete at that smaller school. Uh, so I, I think this is gonna be a fantastic game. You picked a good game to go to. I'll be there too with you guys. And I'm looking forward to seeing both those guys in person. All right, we'll have highlights from all those games, plus plenty more coming your way Friday night on what else? The Friday Night Blitz.